Hey, hey, it's DDA and welcome back to episode 5 of this Dyson Sphere Let's Play where we do our perfect ratio run. That means we're building everything from scratch to the end product in as little building as we can. So no production goes to waste and all the ratios are as perfect as we can get them. And that's pretty damn perfect to be honest. Um, today we are building the build for the Mark III sorters that will make our life extremely easy compared to what we've been doing so far. Uh, no more fiddling around with sorters because to be honest the Mark III sorters transport so much that it's pretty hard to get into any transportation issues with them. I reserved this little plot of land over here for it. It's uh, pretty close to all the other builds we've been doing and I like that because that keeps your main production facilities really close. Of course we will be transitioning to an interstellar version pretty soon but for now it keeps everything close at hand. Now, for sorters, the build will actually be quite straightforward, so I'm hoping this won't be too long of an episode. Uh, of course, we have the um, Mark III assembling units by now, and that will allow us to make a pretty decent production up and running. And let's see, um, how much space do we need? I don't think actually we need that much, so let's just place one over here. And we will need the Mark III, the Mark II, and the Mark I sorter. So let's just look at what they need. Mark III sorters need Mark II, of course, and they need some turbines. The Mark II sorters need engines. And Mark I sorters and the Mark I sorters are very straightforward to produce. It's just some iron and circuit boards. Now, the circuit boards are actually interesting because you can actually place that over here and it will nicely line up with that because that also needs iron and that needs copper so basically if we put the iron past here like so and let's use the mark 3 build since we have them now since the last build something like this uh, that will allow you to transport the iron straight past this and then get the iron into both the mark 1 sorters as well as the circuit boards now, of course, we need way more than this, and we also need a lot of engines, because this needs engines, but because this needs turbines, and turbines in turn also need engines, we actually end up needing quite a few engines. To be specific, we will need six of these, so let's space these out nicely two by two. Actually, no, we can put them close together. I think that will be even better. Something like this. This will be engines. Uh, six of these will be producing three engines per second. And why do we need three per second? Well, we need, as you can see, we need one turbine per second, which needs we need two engines per second because of the ratio that turbines and engines get produced in. And then we need one more engine per second for the Mark II. So this will be exactly enough to supply all the engines that we need. Now, in order to make the engines, Engines are kind of a pain because they need three different materials, but one of them is um, cogs. And the cogs actually need iron as well. And hey, look, we have an iron belt over here. Now, the interesting thing is you need as much, um, um, what do you say? Uh, sorry, you need as much cogs per second as you need engines. So three per second, but because cogs are actually produced tw at twice the speed than the engines, you can make only one per two engine facilities. So like this, we have six engine facilities. We only need three cogs and we can hook them straight up. And we're still using Mark I sorters, but you can actually hook them up like this. No belts needed. So you can see, if we zoom in a little bit, they are directly connected and this feeds straight into and it will be exactly what the uh, engine production needs. Of course, we also need some iron to go in like that. And I think that looks pretty damn good. Now, we need some iron as well for this. Now, the interesting thing is actually that we have a belt with iron over here already. Now, the iron production facilities, I think we will want to put them over here. And we will need about, well, we need exactly 10. I counted it out. Trust me, it's exactly 10. If we place them like this, that means we can put them on the belt here. But what we can actually do is actually flip this belt around. I should probably have done that to begin with, but hey. And if we do it something like this, and then just flip them around. 
This will put the engines on the, uh, sorry, the uh, engines, the uh, iron on the belt. I'm just putting a memo here for myself. This is the iron. Iron goes in here for the cogs. The cogs go straight into the engines. But there's way more iron over here than we actually need for the cogs. And everything else will automatically be transported around the corner and flow into the engine production. Now the engines need not just the iron, not just the cogs, but they also need the magnetic coils. Well, the interesting thing here is that we have a third item that we need, and that is the um, turbines. And this is actually not in the correct spot, so let me just move that over, and let's put that over here. Now, the turbines, like I said, you need twice as much engine production as you need turbine production. So again, this is exactly a 2 to 1 ratio, similar to the cogs over here. So two go in here, and those two go straight into the turbines. Isn't that just perfect? No belts. No belts at all. Just straight up turbines. Now... The turbines also need magnetic coils, and I was just mentioning that because you need, as you can see, we need per assembling facility that produces turbines, we need um, two magnetic coils per two seconds, so that's one per second. So this is, uh, th this will need two per second total. And then on top of that, we will need, um, for this, we will need one per two seconds so this is basically three per second because we have six here so half per a uh, half per engine facility so that means um six is three per second in total so we need five magnetic coils per second now if we have a mark two facility over here as you can see this will be producing two per one second or two per second so this is two. Now we need three more. Now this is a perfect ratio run. So if I would be using Mark II <laughs> assembling machines, I would actually need to build two, but I would have too much. But if I build two of the Mark I versions, I do that for example like this. This will be producing coils as well, but because it's producing at a 75% speed, uh, you can tell that when you uh, Hover over the icon, as you can see, the production speed is 0.75. So this actually does not produce um, one assembling machine in the example of this per two seconds, but it will actually produce um, at 75% speed of that. So 0.75 assembling machines mark once per second. It holds for everything else that you put in here as well. So this will not be producing two per second, but at 75% of that. So that means this is producing 1.5 per second times two is three plus these two is five per second which is everything that we need now the nice thing is this is producing one and a half per second so if i hook that up like this and this these are already supplied and then i can also hook these up like that and then this is supplied and then i can hook this one up and remember, this needs 1 per second, this needs 0 0.5 per second, so this is actually already completely drained. This is producing 2 per second, so what I can do is hook that up to this one and hook that up to this one. That will drain it off 1 per second total, and then the other 1 per second can go straight into here. Now, the only problem is all of these are supplied except for this one, because there's no coils going in here. So I will need to put in the belt all the way like this to make sure this is actually also getting supplied with magnetic coils and that also means that I will need to export the magnetic coils out of here um, which you can do in several ways uh, but I will do that after this um, this fixes a pretty large part of our build already so we have the magnetic coils, we have the engines, we have the cogs uh, we have the iron over here but we of course also need some base materials coming in so something like this that will be the um iron ore and then we also need magnets because of course the magnetic coils need magnets now we need about eight of those and if you do it like that i'm not sure why i'm doing them one by one so let's just do it the quick way lack of item okay well that was not uh, well prepared of me that's a bad tda Let's pick up some of these. We have plenty of them produced by now, so 
That is really nice. All right. Where was I? All right, I was making eight of these. And there we go. Why is it not working? That's because I didn't space them out correctly. I like spacing them out like this. Why? Because it's symmetric and this is a perfect ratio run. So we might as well get the symmetry right wherever we can. It will be rare, but hey, why not do it when you can though? Um, I'm really bad at this tabbing thing, aren't I? There we go. Okay, so now you might wonder, okay, well, the magnets are on this side and we need to get them all, all the way to the other side. That's not a problem. We will simply do it like that. Zooming in a little bit and wrap them around so they will reach all the places they need to go, which is, to be honest, not over here because they only need to reach the magnetic coil production facilities. Now, that is the magnets done. And remember, because this can fit 30 per second now, remember we have Mark three belts, uh, this will be supplying both the iron as well as the magnets. So, cause, so of course you can decide to put the magnets on the other side of this build, but then you have two builds of incoming materials. Not the biggest problem in the world, but I just like having them all on one side. Now we do need some uh, iron ore production as well, uh, mainly again for the coils. And this needs one per second um, times 0.75. So we actually only need one and a half per second, at least for these two. And then we need two per second for that. So that means we need four. I can't make half smelters, unfortunately. So we have to overproduce them by a tiny amount. But there's no way around that. The uh, ratios don't always end up being perfect, unfortunately. But we keep them as close to perfect as we can. Now, these are the outgoing uh, items. I am actually going to put them like this. And again, I'm going to wrap them up all around. Uh, again, you can easily decide to put them on the other side if you want. Uh, it's completely up to you. I just like having all the smelters on one side. Again, uh, it's nice and symmetric. And why not go for that if you can? Now... Of course, we do need to supply them. So we have a small little build like this. And we will have the copper ore going in here and the iron ore going in here. It's actually all the material you need. So nothing complicated with chemical facilities like we had with the Mark III builds. This is a very straight up easy build. And of course, we do need some place to put all of our little belts. And I actually forgot one thing, so you can see me fail and self-correct here for a moment uh, because these will not actually be working like we want them to. Because we have these turbines here, but they're not actually reaching the Mark III belts. So what we can do, uh, not belts, source. So let's do that like that. And then we just extend these out one more and flip them around like and I'm starting to talk like Bob Ross again. And she low. That's not what we want. And look, by the way, look at the amount of foundations I have in my inventory. It's from that first foundation build we did. It's been overproducing so much. It actually has a full storage facility of foundations by now. It makes it so easy to just build wherever you want in your starting planet. Um, I always tended not to use foundations too much, but then you would run into an issue with all those lakes getting in the way. Um, so I really recommend if you haven't done so, make a build like I did in one of the first episodes where you have just a mass production of foundations going and take advantage of that. It's so easy. And again, soil pile is really easy to come by if you just flatten some earth around. I actually haven't intentionally been doing that because I'm flattening the, uh, the areas around my builds and I didn't really put them on the lakes to begin with. I already have half a million uh, soil pile by now, so... As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward way to get them. Okay, but anyway, this uh, makes our build pretty much complete. Of course, I do need to hook it up to some iron and to some copper. I will need to make all these other connections for the um, sorters. And then we have our Mark III sorters and Mark III belts done. So be right back while I do that. 
All right, here we are. Everything is hooked up. We have all the raw materials coming in. We have all the things on the belts. Remember, this won't be functioning optimally as is because I'm still using the Mark I sorters. So, for example, here, the circuit boards are drawing in the copper from over this belt, but it's uh, going at a really slow rate because of the Mark I sorters. And that means this is not producing at optimal speed. Now, that's not a problem because you just want to get some sorters going. But as soon as you do, don't forget to upgrade all your sorters. I will be putting up the blueprint with the Mark I sorters. Not because that's the final product, because that's the product you will initially want to place down. If I put all the Mark III sorters already in there, you will have to downgrade the sorters first before it gets up and running. And then you have to upgrade them again, so that doesn't make any sense. So, please don't forget upgrade your sorters after you get some from this build similarly go back to the mark 3 belts place wherever you build it and make sure you upgrade to the sorters there as well for the same reason and of course in that belt you should build that build you should also upgrade your belts because that came with mark 1 belts as well all right i think this build is really nice and symmetrical so i hope you liked it um before you go one more thing I just want to take a quick look at our system because if you remember from last time in the last let's play at least i had a interesting logistic problem with our silicon we had a tidally locked planet which was really nice um, so there were some pros and cons to that system we're actually in the inner planet now uh, from the start we have one planet over here that has quite a nice amount of everything Energy is going to be a little bit of a challenge here because there's pretty much nothing here that will really work like we wanted to in terms of wind and solar energy. Um, but notice that it only has 400k copper. Now you might think, well, okay, but you have copper on the other planet, right? Well, no, not really. There's only 100k on this planet as well. So we have pretty nice amounts of resources in terms of iron, silicon, and titanium. So that's good. We want lots of those as well. But copper ore we have 100k here 400k here and we only have like 1 million i think left on our main planet 1 million is quite a lot so nothing to stress about but it's interesting to see how these different um setups get you different results in terms of the tiny logistical choices you have to make around your own system it also means that the first thing we want to be importing from outside of our solar system is basically copper of all things which is interesting i thought anyway um of course we also do have a nice gi gas giant uh, where is it there it is which produces fire ice in our case uh, i'm not entirely sure yet if i am going to use fire ice in any of my builds because it's a rare resource and if you want to go for the achievement for example uh, there's an achievement for completing the game or at least making the last research um, without using any rare resource and to be honest fire ice is probably if you're using any rare resource this is probably the one you want to be using um, the other ones are really handy as well but this is an easy one to get and it fast tracks your graphene production so if I'm going to use that in my builds that is actually going to be a little bit annoying because I would have to make different versions of the build because if you don't have fire ice in your main system and I use that as a base material you're gonna have a problem because your build won't work so i think i'm just gonna skip the rare resources altogether but keep in mind that if you do have access to rare resources and uh, you can probably simplify some of my builds um but if you want to go for the achievement for example uh, my builds will be perfect to use because we're using only the raw materials that you, that don't count towards those achievements so anyway just uh, something to consider uh, i thought it was a nice um interesting system we got and just one last nice look at our little build over here. It's not that big. Um, nice and compact. Nice and symmetrical. I really like it. I hope you like it too. And if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. It's nice to see everyone enjoying this content. And of course, I hope to see you in the next one.